So, here we go. This is the scene we was working on last stream. So I'm gonna give you just a quick catch up on that. We're gonna tidy things up, carry on with this, and maybe we might finish this scene today. We'll see. Might not be perfect, but hopefully we make a decent first draft. This is the last scene of Main Quest 2. Um, and here's our outline. So we just have to follow this outline. We've got nine points to hit. We'll see what we can write. Um, we Last stream we did begin it and we, we did all the juicy stuff, the violent fruit deaths. We haven't yet finished that. But I'm thinking we can finish that in the first part of the stream within the first uh, hour at least. But hopefully it won't take much longer than that because I'm excited to get into the carol um, confrontation with the hero that we've got planned here. That will be fun. A carol argument with us, the hero. Um, so, but another thing I wanted to mention before we carry on with that scene, uh, this is probably what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, if anyone's curious what this is, um, it's going to just be a rough um, timeline, very, very rough draft so far, of events that have happened for particularly Nigel and Fiona, considering they're the NPCs we, that we know of so far in Lakeful. Things such as when their parents died, um, when um, they, they met the fruits, what happened between Fiona and the fruits, um, how Nigel got into a situation where he was getting bullied by the fruits, um, and all those kind of things, all that stuff that's gonna make everything cohesive and make sense in the present day. I've already got a rough idea, I've been having to think about it and I've got some good good plans for how that, that can start so I'm excited to see what you guys think. But we'll talk about that more tomorrow because I think it will be best working on that once we've got this scene out the way. Um, because um, what, what we'll be doing once we've done this scene is making sure the previous scenes, the ones involving Nigel and Fiona, are good and we'll re-edit them, make them even better because now we've developed their internal thoughts and desires and fears and that. We might want to just edit their dialogue when we meet them a touch. I know that we want to make a slight edit of the cabin scene um, and those edits we're going to do once we've finished this um, this final scene. Um, so I'm going to cr maybe cross that off for now, but just saying, you know, that's what we're going to be filling in tomorrow. We're having some really fun chats and building up that timeline. Um, and uh, for now, here we go. This is what we did last stream. We were thinking of the last things they'd say before they died of fruits. Um, and it's a little bit messy so far. We need to make some room for lemon. So uh, let's get him in. I think we can finish. We, we made good progress with this last stream and we're, um, we've uh, got to the point where three of them have died in the path where you kill the fruits. And we've already done the spare the fruits branch, kind of. There was one thing I forgot to add in that branch though, which we'll do as well. But feel free to follow on the law Bible, everybody, because this is will update, of course, on our uh, main quest 2 section of the law bible as we write it as it always does um, we we won't cross we won't strike that through yet because we're still in the middle of working on it um, but we'll we'll make room for lemon once we know that we've got all the dialogue we want because we've had four of them say something but apple hasn't yet some said something in fact, he might not say anything, but he might if we think of something. But the dialogues we have for Apple so far, hmm, we'll say. Um, but let's carry on with this bit. Edits are great. The point of a second draft is to make it look like we knew what we were doing all along. Yes, um, indeed. So where were we? So the battle ends, so the fruits. I'm going to go through what we got so far and then we'll just get this finished but I'm I'm thinking let's get this done not we won't spend all stream on the fruits today because I really want to move on to the second half of the stream which involves Carol and Violet and the painting 
so um, we'll just go through it and then get the info in. We spent a long time chatting about it and outlining it last stream, so that's made it easier to kind of have an idea what's going to go in here. But the battle ends, um, so no, we're not going to talk about any battle stuff mechanically today, um, or until we've got all the scene and narrative stuff out the way, which probably won't be until next month. Um, so we won't talk about that bit in particular. We're going to talk about the narrative uh, scenes that happen after that battle. So the fruits are badly beaten at this point, but not quite dead. So now they know that they're, they're probably going to perish and they're going to try everything they can to get out of this situation because they know you know they're not in a good way but the fruits as ambitious and determined as they are aren't going to be not saying anything they're going to try to get out of this situation which is really what kind of motivated me to make a last dying word box for each of them and because of their personality like they've all got a different one we tried to think which one which uh, sentence was most fitting for each based on who they are so yes plum is more likely to beg he speaks first lemon we're probably going to fit him in here between plum and blueberry 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 doesn't usually speak until lemon spoke that's their sort of dynamic we've built for them um as lemon's like a daddy figure to blueberry um lemon's more likely to go out being an utter badass so he's probably going to say something to that degree blueberry of course innocent as ever um thinks that you know because it's his birthday you can't kill me tomato angsty teen so there we go and so after they've each had their say they're all gonna say something one after the other um and you'll see them all helpless there badly beaten but not quite dead that is when you're gonna get your choice um because, you know, it's only fair they can try and persuade you first. And um, we're not 100% sure if these are the points that you're going to get. The plus five to coward or fall or plus five to brazen wise. These are up for editing or changing if we feel we need to focus more on compassion. But it was hard to kind of put it in the compassion box. Because it's a not, not really a black and white situation in regards to what's good or evil here so but you know just so you know that isn't these points are always up for editing especially when we're in the early builds because we'll have to do a lot of balancing testing and i assume that the numbers will change now and again as we play through the builds as they're released so the the outcome of both scenes goes more or less the same except it starts with the tomato saying run you fools but the difference is in the sparing them branch they're able to you know you're not going to kill them so they get to to leave so we'll go that through that first blueberry will say thank you for the great birthday party face lemon and say see i was polite and lemon will say good boy so we've got that father and son dynamic there we th we figured you know it's nice to make them seem a bit human and like they you know get on together as a community even though they're antagonists um because they still deeply care about one another the problem is they're not really accepting of others um, and it's kind of continuing on from what happened at the end of the last scene where lemon told blueberry off you know for not for being rude and um then they'll jump away together then plum will say you've not seen the last of us that's kind of foreshadowing that no you haven't they will be back um and then apple will face you his expression changes into a smile thank you you're giving me another chance to help them and jumps away because out the out the five of them apple is the most noble and he's trying to get them out there conquering ways and bloodthirsty ways um and chat had some really cool like, thoughts on what's going to happen to apple and father maple will eventually murder apple because he's holding back the fruits from their evil plans which he wants them to continue with father maplewood as the evil guardian of the forest and apples are only holding them back and yeah there were some really cool thoughts there um, um vandalia 
uh, mentioned uh, with that and I thought yeah that's pretty fitting and would make sense because if any of the fruits are going to get murdered it would be Apple because he's got the good intentions and he's stopping them and then they can all four of them would conquer like fall together because nothing would be stopping them at that point but if anyone's curious about what we talked about there's the, the, the VOD from the last stream which we'll go into that all a bit more thoroughly um, because otherwise it's kind of like well how are they able to conquer like for because we know that's what's what they're going to do if you spare them if they get the vampire blood that is but if they do it's kind of like well apple you didn't stick to your promise and the reason why is because you apple got killed <laughs> by father vapor um and they jump off the edge of the cliff in their basket they float away using their basket as a boat so yep that's kind of cute so they've left at that point there's one more thing i want to add which i'll mention in a sec well once once the time is relevant but let's um go into the killing branch hi rod how are you doing it's so good to see you not too bad rod how are you so run you falls tomato's the first to die you get your weapon out and you squish tomato but he's in denial He's gonna like be no i'm not gonna die and then he closes his eyes and dies because he thought it was invincible but no you'd almost feel a bit bad for the bad for him but i don't because i don't like tomato but some might <laughs> i can tell faces tomato squish corpse and then blueberry this is proof that zexion is right and blueberry is evil um looks at his friend his dear tomato squish corpse and celebrates saying hooray tomato juice because blueberry is this child that doesn't really understand the seriousness of death um so and that'll be the point when you get your weapon out and you squish blueberry we're killing them one at a time here what rather than in one big swoop simply so there's a bit more of impact and uh, we we get to experience each of them one at a time getting killed yeah it's morbid it's pretty morbid this is dark <laughs> it didn't seem that way like it's all it was all very light-hearted and punny and then all of a sudden fruit death violent gory through fruit death um, blueberry will then be like lemon why am i so cold closes his eyes and dies and lemon will be like you were a good son blueberry and um now it's lemon's turn to die so <laughs> is it bad that i'm getting some pleasure out of this you're all seeing the true side for me now chat squish lemon i'm looking forward to doing the cutscene um all right so lemon's last final words i think we sort of thought these last two were pretty cool for lemon the super badass so I've, let's bold them we've already done that one there where he looks at blueberry squish corp and we corpse and we've done the what it's worth for what did die years ago at the start before we got given the choice so i'm thinking these ones would be a real a real badass way for lemon to go so let's get that down but let me, tell me how, what you think of the final words and deaths as we do them chat like if anyone has any ideas feel free to pipe in this is still a first draft after all um, if there's any inconsistencies anything strikes you as odd don't fear saying so um you get your weapon out and squish lemon and then he and then um he'll die the other the other option for this scene was simply having the choice at the start 
and then just killing them and then having no reaction from the fruits but I kind of really am you know I think having their reactions makes the scene so much more fun and impactful um, giving them their chance to have their say as every villain most villains do in stories especially the, the those are the ones that um, are of this nature are very determined um, good night well we, he would probably say that first before he closes his eyes and dies so they're all kind of going out in a very unique way. Lemon's going out as a badass, very fitting with his very badass-like nature. I mean, a lemon with a scar, come on. Um, Blueberry goes out in a way that he doesn't even understand what's going on. As a child, toddler, yes, that fits. Um, it's kind of like... <laughs> oh dear. Poor Blueberry. Um... And Tomato went out in denial that it was he was gonna go. Um, teenagers, yeah, do think they're invincible. That's for sure. Um, and gonna finish reading an Agatha Christie book. Oh, are you a fast reader, Rod, or a slow reader? Oh, I know, I'm a slow reader. But that sounds fun. Um, and then the next thing that's going to happen, it, so we got to Lemon, he was the third dead, we thought, now it's Plum and Apple. Now Apple all made sense as the last one to die because his parting words, his dying words are going to be the secret of where the grove of wild trees are that will lead to those fruits that we'll find and have nasty side effects in them. So he's going to be the last one to talk. Um, so because it'll just fly much better with what comes next. Plum fourth, um, because what he's gonna say, which is this that one I bolded, um, kind of fits, follows on well with what Apple's gonna say next, probably. So, this is, I mean, it's, it's, um, the scene is getting pretty long here with the box of the flowers we've got, but it's probably going to happen quicker than you'd think. And it'll probably all be over in like 30 seconds or even 20 seconds. Um, because they only really get the chance to say a couple of things before we get our sword out and kill the next one. You're really going to be looking bloodthirsty, but they deserve it. Um, so squish plum this time finished 180 pages in a few hours that's really fast I am slow and I've always wanted trick a trick on how to become a faster reader the reason I'm a slow reader is because I really like taking it all in and um, understanding it all <laughs> I don't like to miss any like details but you know let me get out of those ways. Now we'll copy Plum. Plum's about to die and close his eyes now and he's probably going to say, I thought the good guys were supposed to be merciful. You're gonna feel bad, like, 
The player will probably feel bad at that point and like they've made the wrong decision, but believe me, killing these fruits is the right thing to do. When antagonist says they're going to do something bad, like murdering people, believe them. They're not lying. Um, Apple's the last one to die, which makes sense as well, not just because he's got what he is going to say has more weight overall and he's it's more of a reveal, um, but because he's probably the most good hide and noble throughout the bunch. Some people might think we're going to spare him, but no, we're not. It's all or nothing, this is no sparing one fruit over the other. So, Apple's gonna say, there is no mercy, only vengeance and pie, I know. Would you get a lot of enjoyment out of this scene, this gory fruit scene death, Zexion? How would you feel? I know you'd be happy over the, um, the ending of the blueberry, for sure. <laughs> But there's going to be, like, if you spare them, obviously we're going to meet them again. And there, there will be chances to, for them to have some gory deaths in the future scenes too. Um, we've had, a, there was a few mentions last stream. And there's some exciting things to come in the branch that the fruits get spared. And I think it will be their deaths if you do spare them. Their deaths that will come in the future will be even more juicy then. Because what they'll have done by that point will just make you want revenge so badly that it'll be even just sweeter when they die because at this point we kill them but we don't really understand how villainous they truly are we just know they're pretty bad but believe me they're gonna get worse um okay so not your fault maybe Simply because Simply because it sort of follows on from what Plum says and Apple understands it's not your fault that you had to do it and and then the secret grove of wild trees Yep, is. And then it'll stop there and we'll get the hero saying something now. And that will go into the scene where Carol will demand that Violet continue the painting, which is about to come up once Apple closes his eyes and dies. Because Carol's impatient. She just thinks, get that painting done for me now. She don't care about the fruits, she's happy they're gone. Um, but to this secret grove of wild trees, this would have been something, we'll go into this more tomorrow when we make the timeline of the late fall citizens, um, particularly Nigel and Fiona, but just as a summary, it's what they would have told Fiona, what they, were, what they promised to tell Fiona the location of in the deal that they made for the vampire. Like Fiona, at first they were willing to just stop bullying Nigel for Fiona's sake if they got the vampire in the trade deal, but Fiona wanted more. She wanted, you know, some produce, some juicy produce for them. Be probably because the tavern keeper might have wanted that and Fiona wants to help out. Um because like for themselves will not be getting many goods ex imported there because of the threats and a lot of nearby villages would be a bit would want to keep away from like for considering they're the epicenter of 
things come into life so they're probably struggling for resources at the moment so understandably so they'd probably want to know where the secret grove of wild trees are and this would have been where apple would have been born and where lemon would have been born because lemon trees apple trees whereas the others blueberry and um, tomato in particular were probably born at the farm because we purposely put some blueberries and tomatoes in the farms there and they were probably just traveled there by wagon um but oh we're not gonna have him die until he's given the location but we're gonna have the hero be like where first so we'll do that in a sec pardon me um now back to this okay so we apple's the only one we haven't had say anything so we're gonna bring him up here to say something but he's probably the best to say it before we get the choice we're not going to end on tomato saying that we want something a bit more impactful before we get the choice so probably that it wasn't supposed to be like this but it wouldn't have the ellipses there because he's not like injured well he could he could they are sort of injured but not dead something to that degree but any thoughts any what like this this dialogue i'm pretty i think it works and i'm pretty all right with it i think it's decent but who knows you know if there's ever any debates with any of this or any suggestions we could always make it stronger if there is a way to do that um, but we're going to make a bit of space so we can fit lemon and apples dialogue in here and then they've all had their chance to say one thing each before we get the choice then they've all had their chance to to kind of plead not all of them would plead though because they're too arrogant eh? um and then the choice happens but of course we need to the one thing we needed to do i said we needed to add one more thing to here and that's actually got to be this where the secret grove of wild trees is because it need they need to reveal it in the sparing branch as well we can't just have them reveal that in the death branch so we'll have to add that too um so maybe what we could do is when we get the choice which we'll do that in a sec we'll deal with that bit in a minute because that's going to be what kind of takes us in to um point four here where carol immediately tells violet to finish the painting um right so we need a bit of space so all this Just put, I think that might be enough, we'll say. A little bit more space. All right, so
Now, here's the juicy part. So, yeah, you'll get f plus five fruit affinity points here. Um, and obviously, if you kill them, you won't get minus affinity points of the fruits because they're dead anyway. I um, hope you stay warm and have a pleasant evening overall. You too, Rod. I am a bit warmer today than I was last time. I was a bit, a bit cold last stream. I had my turtleneck on. Um... I don't know if we need the entire excess or turn that off. Um, okay, now this is the bit. So what I figured was, okay, so we've ended with Apple saying where the secret grove of wild trees is but not finishing off the sentence but he will do we just want the hero to perhaps push him a bit and we're gonna do the same thing here of course but it'll be it'll, it'll happen a little bit differently seeing as they're alive so let's uh copy and paste a choice um i don't think it needs to be a black black background one because it's not as um consequential so we can use one of these types this would give affinity points but if we decide it should we can change it um, so let's just do our usual messy blah 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 tech thing and we don't know what's going in here yet but um, I figured one of them Something to this extent, but I think I want to push this more. I don't want to just have it as this, but... Two options where you kind of put, like, ask Apple to tell you where it is. Um, but this one should be much more meaner. and be like, demand, more meaner and more demanding. Whereas this one's like more patient. Um... So I'm going to just put in brackets. Um, and the reason why I'm putting a choice here, really, is just for the purpose of... Um, tension and pacing so that we don't get this secret revealed to us without without us being curious about it first because without the choice apple would just say we spill it all within one dialogue box and we won't understand the weight of it that it's actually important but this way we it's kind of a way to tell us as the player that this information is important um, and this secret grave of wild trees is going to be something that's that we're going to need to remember. Um, so for now, I'm going to just keep that there because I, I feel like the wear bit, we need to kind of edit that specially to make it a bit more patient and sympathetic. Um, this tell me now might be fine because that does sound pretty demanding and it's a bit mean when he's dying. Um, but the next bit, oh, well, we've got to do it for the other branch, haven't we? Um, yes, okay, so. What I'm thinking is, let's just get the grid, is we put pop that there. And if we have the hero, um do the same thing ask 
angom. Yeah, actually no, the hero can't ask because they don't even know that this grove of trees exists. I don't believe Fiona's even informed the hero that, that he needs to know where a grove of trees are. Um, so maybe Apple should just say it off his own back. After all, he's pretty grateful that we've been um, that the group have been spared. So he might just. say it he might just say it so the secret grove of wild trees is oh or we can yeah because we want to like i say make it seem like a big deal so we could to do that we could do this we could have him jump away and then come back and be like oh I've just put rock for now, but honestly, I don't know if rock will be the item that reveals this secret grove tree. I've just thought of the first thing that enters my head. But once we finally do make that map, we might have some even more interesting ideas on what item could reveal this secret grove. Because it can't be easy to find, because otherwise the lightful residents would have find, found it themselves. So it has to be quite puzzly and secret. But I've, I, thought, I was thinking what item could be the rev what does it but i couldn't think so i've just like literally said rock but that's changeable that's up for change we might want to like find the assets first and s online and figure it out once we've seen the actual assets and then we might have a p the perfect item that reveals it um and then he's gonna jump away for good So the only, the reason why I'm thinking have him jump away, but then me jumps back toward the, toward, is to just like show he um, he forgot, but then he realizes oh no this is important. So we can just make break up the pacing probably a bit so that. Um, so that we realise it's important information. Otherwise, if he just says it in the same dialogue box, we, it might not click to us that it's really, it's super important. So, and then he'll go then, and then the group will jump off the edge of the cliff in their basket and float away using the basket as a boat. Um, But really, we want to make this the same dialogue box. I tend to do that with the characters if I can, even if it just means lengthening the dialogue box. So, rather than have two next to each other. I see chat have spoken I'll be reading that in a sec folks get that all neat make sure it's neat first so I've, I've left question mark there because we don't that's probably not going to be the item we'll have one that's less boring than a rock when it comes to the real item 
that reveals the grove. Okay. What if he says something like, even though it didn't work out like I wanted, Fiona still kept her word, so I'll keep mine. When you see her, please tell her. Like, actually, no, please give her this item so she can find the grove, I promised her. Yeah, we could always approach it with giving an item as well. Um, though, um, we'd... Because it's difficult, because obviously in the other version, the other branch in Apple's death scene, he can't be as um, informative, can he? So, um, but that's pretty interesting that in this version he is and the other one he isn't. Oh my goodness, thanks, folks. Ink, ink Flame Writer with that raid here. How are you guys getting on? Lethen, Ink Flame, Moonflower. Thank you for that follow, Moonflower. I appreciate it. Day Gamer, how are you doing? Let's give a shout out to Ink Flame Writer. See what he was up to. Ooh, what game is that for the words? Tell us about that game and your stream and how it went. I appreciate the love. I like your name. I take it you're a writer. If so, that's very that's very cool because we like doing that here too. That's what we're into in this stream, isn't it, folks? Um, and how are you happy to be here? It's, well, it's lovely to meet you all as well. And I was looking for someone to raid and Lethen suggested you. Well, thank you very much, Lethen. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. But if anyone's curious what we're doing here, we are um, writing up a scene in Draw.io at the moment. This is the program we use to write up our scene drafts um, for our RPG game that we'll be having a Steam page in the coming weeks. How exciting. The game itself is nowhere close to release, but we want to get the Steam page up early. Um, and um, this is a, a scene from Main Quest 2 that we're writing together. So it's all very fun. And um, it's an RPG style game to help you get more words in. It's super fun. That does sound fun. I'm going to have to Google that game because I'm super curious now. Awesome. But thanks for being here and joining in on the raid and for passing the love to us. If you're curious about the project and the game, folks, we have a website. You can have a nosy if you'd like. Mind blown, never seen an, an RPG, but I just started playing last year. Oh, really? You started playing what RPGs? Yes, encourages daily writing. Yeah, I'm actually really curious about that game. It sounds really creative and fun. <laughs> Shadow Run. Oh, cool. Shadow Run. I've actually got those Shadow Run games in my. Um, Steam Library, and I know that they're a tabletop game as well, aren't they? I've heard good things about that series. Okay, so back to this part. Zexion had a suggestion, so... I feel, I do agree that maybe we could mention Fiona in this branch. Whereas in this branch, we wouldn't have time for him to probably do that so it'll be a little bit more mysterious on what this grove is and who but it'll come to us because we will be handing in this quest to fiona as soon as it's over and we go back to lake full so i'd say the information about the grove will be clear to us when we hand in the quest um My RPG of choice is Final Fantasy XIV right now, Ink Flame says, but I also play D and D. Final Fantasy XIV is awesome. I have, I'm no, I'm not a sub to fourteen at the moment because it can get a bit pricey, month after month. But some, I, I often go back, especially when new content comes out, and I really enjoy it. Shadowbringers was amazing. It's a super good one. Big fan of the Final Fantasy series, me. And uh, need to go scratch breakfast and plan lunch for me and kiddo. Oh, sounds yummy. I hope you have some yummy breakfast and enjoy the lark. Let us know what yummy breakfast you have if you'd, if you, if you'd like to. Um, okay, so. 
I definitely think, let's think of how to word this, so. So I don't want to make it too wordy or go on for too many dialogue boxes, this, but let's, um, one thing we definitely should say is when you see Fiona, please tell her the secret grove of trees are north of here. Yeah, and it could be an item. I'm not against having it be an item either, but because we're pretty clueless on how this Grove puzzle is going to be solved right now and revealed, it's difficult for us to set in stone exactly what this item or secret item that reveals the location will be. So um, I'm going to, instead of putting rock, because it can be a bit misleading for you, for you guys and me to see that word there. So I'm going to just put a gap thing. I think having gap is the perfect way to show that we, we still need to decide that. But I'm still thinking we maybe we still need to add that extra information in there um, about the keeping the word. Uh, So maybe we should. It'll make it'll make it a bit longer, but I think it could be worth it because otherwise we're gonna wonder what's happened. It kind of just spells out a bit more that they made a deal. Because I think it's gonna be optional for the player at this point to understand that a deal went down. I think they'll have to read little notes and diaries left around the inn to know. Because I had one of my ideas I had was that Nigel has a diary. And he kind of talks about his, it's a way to let out his anxieties about his sister leaving and what happened each day and go through a, a sort of daily or weekly thing where he encountered the fruits and how he's coped with his sister not being around. But we'll talk more about that in Friday's stream because um, there's a lot of ideas I've got about Nigel and Fiona um, and I want to like get it all bullet pointed out in a timeline so we can make sure it's going to totally make sense and be cohesive um and let's catch up with chat and oh my god wait i lied when i hear rpg i think D, &D. we're talking video game rpgs um 10 and uh 10 2 are the best yes this rpg that we're doing here in this stream is a video game rpg um it's going to be on it's going to be uh, available um, on Steam eventually one day. We, I've, I, I recently did um, purchase a Steam, uh, what do you call it? it? It costs about $70 I think to have a Steam game up on Steam. So I recently did, did all that but I'm filling in all that, all the product page stuff at the moment. It's going to be a coming soon page for a, a long while. Um, but I want that wish list to build up, you see. So I'll be letting you all know, folks, when it does get launched, the Steam page. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that'll be super exciting. So feel free to follow me on the on Twitter or, uh, or, or join our Discord, folks, if you'd like, because they're the perfect places to be for announcements like that. And whatever you played D&D in line at all, it's an MMO for the mid-2000s based on the 3.5 edition says sexy and Shadowbringers almost made me cry many times same ink flame writer final fantasy 14 brings out all the emotions in me i think it's such a good story um and get a day asked what's fiona's role in the story well fiona is a little a 12 year old girl she's very like she's very spunky and she lets nothing stop her she has no fears she's a badass 
She's the bravest 12 year old girl ever. But her brother's the opposite. Her brother's very fearful and he's gone through a lot of anxiety and trauma in his life. So he's very different to his sister. But Fiona and her brother Nigel are the only two NPCs of the, the village in episode one that we've created so far, that we've set in stone in the summer. Um, or just before the summer, sometime between late spring and summer, I'll be um, streaming us developing some new NPCs together to put into our game because they're going to make an appearance in the second playable alpha build that I release. So I'll be I'll be releasing seasonal playable builds this year, um, and there'll be bits of new content each time, slowly added to the game. And eventually it'll be at a releasable state but it's not going to be until but i'd say this year is going to be dedicated to filling out the main quest that's the goal and next year is going to be about uh, adding the juicy features and all the all the detail to the world but it's all about getting that base and foundation first um and uh, I love Steam, that is awesome. Congrats, thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. And thank you, uh, Stormborn, for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, what's the Twitter? Mad respect, this is clearly lots of work. And thank you, Zero, for the follow as well. Let's give you folks some commands if you want to follow our project, if anyone's interested. That's the Twitter page. I'm not on social media all the time because I try to avoid it because it can be a real time sucker. But when there's like really cool things to talk about and announce, I'm always right on there. So that's one good place to keep up. Um, another good place to keep up is Discord because any news goes in there too. And I'm, I'm in there every week, most days. Um, and I'll put that command in wrong. And hi, Kia, how are you doing? Thank you so much for that, right? How have things been? Um, and the other place to go, I mean, this is the best place, in my opinion, to be, is my YouTube, because every single VOD of all time is on the YouTube. And I'm currently working on um, making it more presentable and organised as well. So I'm, I'm kind of titling every single VOD. I'm like watching them all through again and titling them all. So I, so everybody knows specifically what was focused on in each VOD. So you can even like go right, right back to the start of this project, which was, which was over a year ago now, and see the progress we've made over time. Um, and every single VOD gets uploaded there because I really like keeping track and seeing that progress of the journey. Um, so, um, so yes. And it is, it's definitely a lot of work day. Like this is something I wouldn't recommend everybody to do. Even people who just have a minor interest in stories and game dev because it's literally, it becomes your life. <laughs> if you want to do something like this, it literally has to become your life. Um, otherwise, you, you, it's a bit of a feat otherwise to pull off, if, especially if you're ambitious about it and you want to create something uh, with meaning and detail and that's carefully crafted, for sure. I mean, this project's evolved massively. In the early days, I was not really as ambitious as it is now. I didn't even think the game was going to be on Steam in the first year of creating it I just thought it was going to be a fun thing but it's gradually become something I've cared more and more about and wanted to make sure is, is, a, is a really enjoyable experience and working uh, 64 to 70 hours a week almost for two months now oh my god Kia are they working you to the bone what are they doing to our, our Kia guys this is to stop Hope you're okay. Okay, so when you see Vienna, please tell us. Oh, yeah, well, I made it bigger, didn't I? Because I was going to add a bit more information there. So, uh, hmm. I've got to scroll back in chat. So,
Hmm, okay, so I'm thinking how to do this because I do like to have the hesitation bit where he realises. Um, uh, try to get, think. Um, I mean, I'm going to write it exactly how Zach suggested because I do, I do like that, but it might need to be edited just a touch so it fits with the hesitation. So one sec, I'll just get it in first. Work out like I want it. The owner still kept her word, so I'll keep mine. When you see her, please tell her the secret and all if you have a look for her. Okay. Because if we put I in front of that, it doesn't seem to flow quite as a. Uh, but that might just be my own head. So I think, and part of me thinks it needs to just be a, a bit. A bit shorter and more concise just a touch but still get the same message across but I think we get in there I think it's um that's what we want to really include that information just so it's clear to us um that the, their relationship at that point we clued in on how that they knew each other and that there was a deal between them um, that information isn't something we're going to be made aware of here because Apple dies in this branch. Okay, so it's good money at least. Ah, that's the that's the one thing to get that money. You need to sacrifice your time. It's all about uh, giving time, isn't it, in this world to earn that cash. And it's it's weird like for me money would be great like I I, I I need we all need money right and parts of me are like desperate for money at the moment like, I really need to save up for some things um, and I've been wishing I was a millionaire very badly <laughs> I've been wishing it um, but nope but when it comes to money versus time i'm like give me my time any day i need my time otherwise raindrop chronicles will never get done well, that's the most important thing to me in this whole world so yeah i'll be i'll be i'll be poor if it means getting my passion project done or making time putting effort and time into my passion project it's a sacrifice um and I think you might have missed my last message. Get something a bit more concise that works with life and death fruits. Oh, I'll look sexy. I'll scroll back in chat. Must have got all merged in with all the uh, raid and all, all of that stuff. So I'll scroll back. But thanks for letting me know. Or I could have missed that. And if you get one million, let me borrow five pound. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> okay, so um, Zexy says... Uh, you can have something like the owner kept her word, so I'll keep mine. Here's a map to what we promised her, and then if they die, you just get an option to loot the Jews covered map. If you let them live, you've been told to to take the map to Fiona to start that quest line. And if you killed them, then you loot the map and you can show it around town. And Fiona will realise what it is when you show it to her. That's a good idea. A map uh, is another idea. I'm going to actually copy that and put it in a notepad files XC. Because this is one of those things that could gain all this dialogue in and all these little details could take the rest of the stream. Um, so, um, for now... Oh, wow, that is a long dialogue box. It's gone into the other seat. So for now, we, I'm going to return to that. If we get time for the end of stream, I've got it saved, what you said, because I think it's going to be handy. Um, but we'll move on to the next bit simply so we can get in that Carol confrontation scene that we so 
so excited to get in today. Um, okay, so, and that means we might need to edit this a touch as well. Um, let me just read it over. Okay, so I guess it just depends. The map idea is good, but then it's more asset work and stuff to do. So if we want to go for the simple route, just saying north is is the way. But I'll have to think about it off stream because it's one of those things, you know. Um, and um, and uh, we'll fit in because this sort of thing I could just be thinking about for the next two hours and then stream's done. And then it's like, oh no, we've not done the carol part. Um, five dollars out of the question, you can borrow. Uh, yeah, those are the only two options, <laughs> lol. I get the joke, that's one joke, I get sex. So. Um, okay, so. Oops. So I'm gonna do it just the way that it currently is so far, but if we do if I do edit this part between now and next stream, maybe it will be if we do decide to change it or add a map or whatever. I'll think about it because I can't make up my mind just yet. Um but we'll just have it as the current plan for now. Um why is the arrows gone so silly? I don't know why, let's do it again. And this is where he, he um, will die for good, so we actually have to get rid of that one now. So we can loot a map, I'm just thinking how we can do that, because technically we're out of the battle now, so we'd have to have a pop-up come up, say we've got a map or something, which isn't out of the question. But it just adds a little bit more uh, extra complexity to the situation. Not great, like, but it's another another asset, another asset to, to do. So it's is north. Um, but whatever works best. If it feels like this way somehow isn't adding up as smoothly as we'd like, then we can always go for the map solution. So the gap bit, the, the line, the blank is the item that would unlock the thing if we were going to go for that option. Um, now, now that that's out of the way, we can cross these off on the outline because we've done it. So strike through. So now we're on this bit. As soon as the fruits are out of the picture, Carol shows no hesitation and immediately tells Violet to finish the painting. So this now now that we've had the last fruit out of the five, finally close their eyes and die. Um, it's the uh, the ideal time for Carol to finally get selfish and be all thinking about herself. Um, so, because if we remember, if we go back to when we first met the fruits, Carol was very, very determined and desperate to have Violet paint that painting. Um, and folks, just so you know, in case you're wondering how to keep follow this scene as we do it, we have a law bible. Feel free to check it out. It is linked on the main website. But you, if you click on the story section, main quest two, there is an embedded 
um, diagram, an embedded uh, thing, which is basically this. So it, it does update in real time and it will allow you to follow folks that are new to the stream. It's fun. It's fun. I was so happy when I got embed the embedded in there. It makes it so good as a community to do this. Um, okay, so yeah, so just reminding ourselves that Carol's a lady on a mission and she wants that pet rose, Violet, I mean, she used to be called Rose, but she's called Violet now, to, um, to do this painting. But, um, the fruits interrupted them in the previous scene and they ended up being just a complete and utter burden to Carol. So now that they're dead, Carol's going to be pretty, pretty happy. So here we go. Um, I think that makes more sense there. I can't decide where to position these dialogue boxes. So let's remind ourselves. So we, we've done that. We've dealt with the fruits of the dead now. All have escaped, one or the other. Um... Okay, so let's just get copy and paste a Carol dialogue box now then. And this dialogue box, it's going to have to come from both here, but here as well. So let's drag an arrow from here to here. Because we got branches. This is just the one branch, but the other branch was them um, escaping, not dying. So, thank you, Luna, for that follow. I appreciate it. So appreciate it. If you do a map, you can make a key item called Juice Covered Map and you can have the game check if it's in your inventory. If that is, it gives the Grove related dialogue when you take to Fiona. If it just, if player has something item, then give dialogue, else give normal conversation. So it's not too much work and helps save some variables and switches. Yeah, so I'm going to copy that as well, Zexy, so I can have that to refer to. So it's going to be one or the other. I just haven't made my mind up yet um, whether I want to go for the simple uh, non-asset route with just the dialogue as information and di like the north direction with the item, whether we want to go for that or whether we want to go for the map. So I'll have a think about that one. But it's good to have the have options, and you know things could. If, if 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 I stick with this and but then change my mind afterwards, so be it. We'll see. Because you know the thing with this project, it's things get changed. You know things don't always stay the same. Like originally with this scene with the painting, we was originally going to have two routes: one where it was a full colour painting of the reptile, and one where it was just a red painting. Um, but uh, I figured that it was that was just extra, a fluff choice that didn't really make much difference in the long run and it would only add extra time onto the development of the project doing uh, the extra assets for no reason. I tend to only want to have um, choices if they're going to be really key and important to the project now. So give me a minute folks because I just need to have a quick BRB. But I won't be long, I'll just be a couple of minutes. I'm gonna get myself a glass of water because I've got a dry throat. And hi Van, and thank you for the follow, XCCO. I'll be back in a few minutes.
Okay, I am back. And you can also have the Grove quest locked behind letting the fruit live. Okay. So yeah, the Grove quest will probably be there for both branches just so it's not, uh, doesn't get confusing and um, so the, the story somewhat does still feel like it's going the same path and not locked behind branches so i still want to like not i know that i always say this is a choices matter game which it is 100 percent but i don't want to get all carried away by making it too messy how it goes so the tidier the better really but um considering there's all all these little intricacies that, that are gonna happen as well um but you know we'll see things can change and evolve um when i make a decision this is a first draft after all and i could ever change your heart a week two weeks a month down the line and be like actually this section with apple needs to be readjusted um, and i think that's something we've all got to realize with game development and storytelling everything's adjustable and you can have regrets and change of hearts all the time um I remember when I had to ban someone from the community, it's, it all came down to the person I banned not being very rigid with the changes that w we were going down and little things we decided that we were going to do differently because that person got deeply attached to um, certain aspects of how things were. But they couldn't stay like that. The project evolves, game development evolves if it's going to be a better decision right so um so yes it's uh even though i'm like yeah maybe we should do it this way i might change my mind for sure i might i, might. I always change my mind all the time i was i was watching some old vods back and hi rex how are you doing i was watching some old vods back and i was really shocked folks um, like even things I said a year ago, I was like, "Why did I say that? <laughs> why was I? Why was I saying that?" Like, I was shocked at myself. I was saying really strange things, like that the game was going to be finished in a year. Episode one, I thought it was going to be finished in a year, and I was laughing at myself. I was like, "Am I just absolutely silly?" <laughs> So, um, and uh, not too much we're working on Apple's last words. Yeah, Van, so we're finishing off what we was doing last stream, basically, um, where we was, like, fi finalising the fruits section of this scene. Just before we move on to the carol part with the hero, because that's what we're going to do in the second part of the stream, we're going to do that confrontation between Carol and the hero that we were really excited to do. It's going to be really juicy, guys. It's why I'm so excited about today's stream. And I've crossed off now the um, the fruits part because that's kind of done and dusted now. We've, uh, we've decided on the last words and they're dead now. So if you're curious, guys, if you want to know how it all unfolds and how they all die, um, feel free to follow the law Bible. It's all in there. The only thing... I was always talking with Zexy about just... Um, there's a few like little bits involving Apple that uh, aren't a hundred percent finalized yet. There's like a, um, something I'm undecided about that I'm kind of like, hmm, I don't know how to approach it just yet, and I've not like set, I've got, I've not set my heart on how I want that to go just yet. But Zex has given me a couple of interesting ideas which I'm going to take on board. Because it's definitely doable and I, I might like sit after stream and think, yeah, I might do it that way. I might like totally think about doing it that way. But it's just a slight adjustment. It's nothing like different really. It's just all that would be different was the reveal of the location and how we, how, how we go about revealing the location of that secret grove of trees. Um, but the dialogue itself and how everything like goes about is not really much different but um i want to go for whatever option's the easiest really um i mean i don't always say i want to go for easy i want to it's a combination of going what's easiest for me to implement but also what's going to have the most impact on the events and the story at the same time and be the most uh, best for the, for the game 
um, and uh, hi mid Saber and Saber, how are you doing? Did you enjoy your playthrough of Cyberpunk? I haven't finished it yet, mid Saber. I've, I've not played it um, since before Christmas, mainly because I'm waiting for the patch that is coming out in January, because I think it was coming out, was, or was it next month? I can't remember if they said Jan or Feb. Um, not because I think I I can't I can't I think it's unplayable because I don't I could easily still play it as it is, even though it's a little buggy. Um, but I'm thinking, why not just wait? I'm, I'm super busy this month anyway, so it's not gonna. It's kind of not gonna hurt to just wait a few weeks for the patch to come out, considering that um, that makes sense. But yeah, have you played it, Mid Saga? I'm super excited to get back into it though because I was really enjoying it um, and my experience wasn't too buggy I have to say it definitely seemed um, worse what other people were saying compared to my experiences um, but it, it, it definitely wasn't polished there was definitely some little little uh, hiccups but nothing like di any different to how en any other open world RPG generally is on its first release. Um, all right, folks. So, and let and let, how let's sit to location. Yeah, that's it. Zexy explained it perfectly. So, so right, guys. Yeah. So as you can see, if you are looking at following this on the law Bible, I've put a gap. There's a gap in this because we don't really know the information fully right now about the secret grove of trees because it hasn't been 100 percent developed but this these dialogue boxes concerning apple will very much be adjusted over time when it becomes a little clearer because it's a little bit of a muddle in my head at the moment which is what i was on about earlier when i was saying things evolve and things can change and decisions can sort of be um tidied up over time so um well hopefully what we can get down today will be a decent first draft even though yeah it probably won't be like the final final thing so if we can get down a, a decent first draft today i'll be super happy um and even here i've kind of put in brackets um with the hero dialogue because i'm not 100 percent sure on that yet all right so now we've finally got to the carol bit so the fruits have just died everybody or run away depending on what branch you've picked and carol's gonna probably say something like let's think all i know is carol should be super savage here She's got to really show her complete and utter selfishness because this is going to provoke an argument or confrontation, if you want to word it that way, between you as the hero and Carol, potentially. There's going to be some real talk going on because Car it's about time Carol gets a good uh, telling off, really. <laughs> so this will be interesting to discuss. Um, I was thinking she could say something like, Something to the extent of at least they're gone now or finally some peace and quiet and then face Violet and say finish the painting. Like she's just really just one track minded on that painting. Is that like really bad? Does, would this make you look at Carol in a bad light that she literally has no sympathy at all because she doesn't let's just be clear she's not going to be sad that the fruits are dead she's just glad that they're out of the way she just wants um so it, it, it does seem savage if you got the route where they died but that both dialogues could work on that as well it could totally work on that so whether they float away on the, in their basket and escape or whether they die i think fig i think that's the kind of dialogue that would fit both paths um and then she could do something like faces violet so we'll make that um I 
We're making Carol, Carol selfish here on purpose really because it feels like the perfect opportunity to to get to say something to her as the hero. Um, but feel free to give me your thoughts folks. Like This is just like first draft dialogue thoughts. But really I'm trying to get across that sort of... Uh, Carol just all she cares about is Violet getting that painting done that is what she's thinking about right now because if we go back to scene four before we come across the fruits that's what Carol wanted and then they got interrupted <laughs> um hi Matt how you doing enough time we produce this time for this vampire to produce <laughs> i like that one met it's about time yeah i think i think if carol was more the eloquent type she'd be saying what met suggested for sure um it's about time all right so Because that's super clever. Really nice. It's a shame that Carol isn't one who does have a way with words, but I figure she's as blunt and, sh and uh, doesn't really have the most <laughs> eloquence with how she comes across with her language. She's just she, she's just as subtle as a, as a brick. <laughs> almost where you just think how rude to that extent. Like almost in disbelief that she even said it. Um, sort of thing because if Carol's not awful in this scene or I don't know if awful's the word selfish if Carol's not selfish in this scene it's not going to provoke this uh, potentially juicy confrontation that we're about to have um, okay so I don't know if, 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 if it's the right time for Violet to say anything, actually, let's think. Um, we'll just we'll just move her down here a sec, just out of the way. Really, who we want to talk is the hero at this point. Okay, so this, where are we? Let's let's cross that out because we've dealt with that bit now. Um, as soon as the fruits out the picture, Carol shows no hesitation and immediately tells Violet to finish the painting. So you tell Violet to stop and that she doesn't need to paint as you have something Carol needs to say. Um, Carol rips into you for interrupting and demands that Violet paints. Okay, so if you understand the whole lucky charm concept and story um plot plot of the game that the the secret that uh, the hero is keeping from carol then you'll understand what this is about it's basically a continuation of what we was doing in main quest two scene two no scene three this scene there was a there was a time just after the flashback where Carol was venting about losing her family and you turn away and look at your lucky charm in your pocket and then you confess, or well, you try to confess. You say to Carol, I have something you need to see, Carol. And this is the good and brave path. But you can also go for the not say anything path, which is evil and cowardly. Um, but unfortunately, you actually lose affinity points with Carol, if you're honest, because she'll tell you to shut your yap trap. I'm, I'm the one who is speaking here, she says. And that's because she's so arrogant that she just likes sound of her own voice and she doesn't want to interrupt her. But you're actually trying to be like, look, Carol, I've, I've got something that belongs to your family here. Maybe this will help us find them. Like, you're actually bringing another solution up. 
you're not sort of thinking this is all on violet and so in this scene you're going to try and do that again you're trying to be honest with carol and be like look i actually have um a lucky like you know this lucky charm whatever lucky charm that is depends on the one you picked in the custom hero creator at the start of the game um which will be implemented on our new version of the custom hero um we'll say that you look at the lucky chart and then you say that and carol's going to just tell you to shut up again basically and that's going to just really get your blood boiling at this point especially if you're a more evil hero and then you're going to have the option too as we say here you can call scold carol for being selfish because she's sort of crossed the line at this point maybe depends on your perspective and how you feel but i'm sure a great number of people will think carol's pretty rude um and um maybe violet gets a surprised look on her face from carol's comments showing that she's more sympathetic than carol yeah you mean sympathetic about the fruit's death yes I think that's good because then it shows the contrast between the two as well as people um so maybe we could say violet looks sad even and we can put that in first actually um because i do want to have some sort of reaction from violet in this scene oopsie oh dear so yeah we can still attach that to Oh no, I crossed that off like a big silly billy, didn't I? There we go. We'll move that here. Um, there. And then Carol's just like in contrast to um, Violet being like, finally some peace and quiet. Now, um, I like, I mean, the other ideas for Carol dialogue was something like, at least they're gone now or finally it's about time, which which could work too, but I think saying something like finally some peace and quiet just hits even harder um, because it's like, yeah, especially on the death branch. <laughs> but, um, okay. And it's kind of ironic, really, considering Carol's the one that doesn't give anybody peace and quiet, really. It's almost laughable. Um, so there we go. Oh, we've I've also re realised something. The, the look sad should really only be in the death branch for Violet. If um, they escape, she should probably look like something else. So let's just delete that a sec. Hmm, what would Violet's expression be if the, on the escape route then? Because, you know, it might be a bit weird if she looks sad at the idea of them escaping when her life's being saved. I'd be quite happy about that if I was Violet. So, um, I mean, we could, we might not necessarily need to have um, Violet react as anything in the branch I escape, but I feel like I still would like some reaction. Um, But we might, it might be really irrelevant to have a violet reaction on that other route. So what we'll do, yeah, we have it there. But for the one where it's just an escape and they haven't died, we'll um, go straight to Carol. Um, is it going to move? <laughs> okay. Um, there we go. So yeah, that um, that one there is when they've left. So they're still alive, they've escaped on that branch because we've got two branches, don't forget. One where they live and one where they die. So 
I was thinking I would like still like a violent reaction, but I couldn't think of an appropriate expression that she might have that could contrast well with Carol's reaction on that branch. But it works super good on this one. Um, Um, and she could look worried since she doesn't know if they'll try to capture her again. Yeah, I mean, I think I definitely think we should have a reaction from Violet. Worried, worried might be a good expression if we can pull that off with um, with this sprite we've got. It, or if we got one on the face set, I don't know. We'd have to get some extra assets done if not. But I think we could get some concerned ones out fine on, on the default RPG Maker Generator the face generator okay so um honestly my vote would be for no reaction there's no reason for it to be happy or um relieved if they live yeah so that's the thing it's a bit harder to pinpoint an, a, an emotion on the living one um and uh, though I do agree worried because if they're alive she might be worried for a safety considering the one eater blood could be one but I think the sad one works on this because although they were enemies, I think Violet would. She she has more sadness for loss of life and you know, even if they're bad, she's a little bit softer in nature um, than Carol. So it's a good contrast in this particular branch. Um, all right, so now finish that painting. Here we go then. Now that that's just a copy and paste from the other one that tell me now so ignore that or we'll delete that now um, so stop don't paint I have something Carol needs to see and this one would be the dot 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 again if you want to go with being that evil the the um, what were the points we gave before in Matt in uh, scene three let's review um, because it'll probably make sense if we have the same ones. So I'm going to copy and paste. Um, so we'll give good, too good, too brave. And again, you'll probably lose affinity points with Carol for interrupting. She she appreciates you more for being silent. You know, in this situation, you're going to be more, Carol's going to like you more if you're quiet. But the, the point is it's going to be bad in the long run when Carol does find out the truth and you could lose more affinity in the long run with Carol by keeping the secret. Um, because if you ended up going with this branch and she finds out the truth later on, she, if she's got any sort of sense, she will remember that time you tried to tell her. And then she, she will probably gain affinity points them back in the long run than if you decide to go for this route. She will blow up at you big time if you end up being the silent one in this situation. Um, there we go, so that's the same as that there, so we can delete that now. So you just, again, once again, you're trying to tell Carol the honest truth as the hero in this situation, because really without doing that, it's a bit of a plot hole because you as the hero have some very valuable information having your hands on that lucky charm. The lucky charm could either be Oliver's ribbon, Meryl's bra, um, Kat, Alvira's smoking pipe, Hank's plank of broken wood. Um, and do you know what I mean? If, you've, if you don't say, 
it's kind of like why is uh why are we letting violet do this painting when we have the actual item it could be an even better route to finding her family than what violet's doing right now and the whole point is we, we've tried we've tried to tell carol she just she's so like you know ridiculous that she's not even listening um but you know she could she carol's got so much room for character growth it's it's actually um interesting that she's so shockingly arrogant at this point in the story i'm, I'm interested to see how she's gonna soften soften as a character over time okay so oh this is the wrong way around this should be actually first because really if we're gonna do this we need in the scene we need to show that we're looking at lucky charm if it was meryl's bra for example we can have a bit of pink poke out it can have the hero like you know a bit of pink poke out of them and if a bit of red ribbon if it was oliver or vice because otherwise we're not going to get the context um but if we like have a little just a little sequence where we look then we actually know what it is otherwise we'll be like what is what, what is it that carol needs to say and we won't the player won't even know so that's just kind of the reminder bit you're looking at the um the thing in your pocket and um you were already annoyed as it was probably is it is the hero well i don't like to make assumptions and say you was annoyed because you might not be annoyed with carol but i'd say i would be <laughs> but um that's why we get choices because you you can you can speak to carol in a different way you don't necessarily have to scold her in the next in the coming uh, dialogue but we'll we'll have a think about that so and then carol could say something like um and that, let's catch up with chat first before uh, we carry on um i think that with the living one violet should be concerned glancing at the hero and looking concerned which causes which could cause the view to think two things violet is wondering why the hero would let them just go free and concerned for her own life and she appreciates you more for following orders lol and having violet be upset with either result is a neat way to show how averse to combat she is in general at that time yeah so I'm not sure about Violet being actually sad, sad in the branch with that escape like she is here. I think she should definitely show more emotion and remorse in this particular branch like we've got here. But I do kind of agree that maybe there should be some sort of expression, like maybe a worried, like a subtle worried kind of look with the escape simply because they're alive and there's probably thoughts going through a head at that but it, i think it would maybe be a different emotion to this but that's something to think about i mean feel free to debate that chat and share your thoughts um and continue to share your thoughts because i will like reread what you've said um after streaming the vod and i might have some some thoughts might come to my mind that haven't come to my mind quite yet who knows um so carol here in this particular scene would be like shut up now is not the time if, if you pick this branch mate so let's get let's get something like that down so it's going to be different of course whether you interrupt her or not so I mean, we could always go with the shut your yap trap thing that was said last time because that was entertaining, but there's a reason why I don't want to say shut your yap trap in this because um, I've got a good insult that the hero could give Cam in a, in a bit. Um, the court call insult that was that Rex, Rex had a while back. Um, and I don't want to have too many like mouth-related insults in one scene. It might be overdoing it just a touch so um 
Okay, um, but we'll see. We'll see, because there's a lot of ways we can take this argument with Carol and the hero. Plenty of ways. Um, face is violet. So really, really what we want to get across most of all is that Carol is not letting you get a word in edgeways. Ultimately it has to come down to that because that painting needs to be painted and you're not going to get a chance at this point in the story to confess. Um, and um, she just she's just seeing you as a distraction because you've said stop don't paint that's carol's worst nightmare what you're saying there because she just sees you as resisting what she wants and her goal so she's not going to like you very much for saying stop don't paint um now the other branch We could simply go with Harold. Obviously, we don't need the shut up bit because you have an interrupter in this, but she could still do the face violet and paint part, perhaps. Especially if Violet's just standing there looking sad or looking worried, and if it's the other branch, like, and not painting, she, she, she'd uh, repeat the demand. Um, okay, so let's see what you guys have said. Um, Matt says, option to point it out, the looky charm in a really smarmy Matt way, like, oh, maybe you need a reference of what to paint, how about this, and place it on top of Carol like she's pedestal for it, yeah, you know, it would be funny if we did reveal it, but because, like, the, the plot point is that the reptile needs to be painted so it leads eventually to that cave and the mission to seek out the reptiles it would ruin the whole uh, the plot but it is would be fun eh? but eventually you know this will be revealed with the right point in time you will eventually it's all gonna blow up and carol will find out you've got this lucky charm so it will be interesting to think of how that revelation will eventually happen and when it'll happen um because we don't really know the ideal plot point at this point in time for that to happen or even if it's going to be in episode one um but we'll figure out the perfect point and it will lead to um i'm guessing it will end it will happen in episode one or towards the end because that might be the push that we need to take us to the farmlands. Um, but we'll say. Um, and the wording of stop, don't paint seems a little still. It may be stop, don't paint just yet. I have something. That might fly much better actually. Um, so stop. Especially because stop is such a, you know, it's so short sentence. It's better to balance it out with a slightly longer sentence there. Um, okay, there we go. But yeah, feel free to point out any, like, dark, because this is a first draft dialogue sort of uh, version and chances are dialogue isn't going to be like worded perfectly first time so it's always good to have alternative suggestions there um okay so now we've dealt with that bit you tell Violet to stop that she doesn't need to paint as you have something Carol needs to say. Um, Carol rips into you for interrupting and demands that Violet paints. Yeah, we've sort of done that, haven't we? So, 
with with with, with uh, Kat with the demand. We can cross the last dying words off now, by the way, because we've done that. Um. Now the next point. Oh, we get we're getting through it quite good. Hopefully, we can get through it by the end of stream. So you can skull Carol for being selfish. You could point out that even the fruits, as evil as they were, still called them humans, not flesh bags. Mention the names she uses are hurtful. Suggest that Carol's behavior and morals are worse than the fruits. Carol could be quiet or be visibly upset or angry. And eventually that's, you're gonna just potentially scold her so much that you might feel a bit bad and then not to go ahead with the painting. But let's deal with the argument side of things first. Now, there's two approaches to this um, argument. You can be um, a much kinder hero, like firm, but kind to Carol, or you can be just outright savage to Carol. So there can be two versions of how this can go down. Um, we'll think about different approaches and ways that we can uh, scold her or tell her and make her point her. If we're gonna, if it's gonna be a focus on the flesh bag thing, that means we need to say flesh bag here. But if we go with that route, that means she hasn't said flesh bag. We need to make, we do need to make Carol say the word flesh bag in, in both branches because otherwise it's, there's not going to be a, any relevance for us like bringing this flesh bag, bag business up. Um, but this is, this is the point, what's so cool about this moment is it's the moment that it might cause Carol to stop calling you a flesh bag once and for all. Like she's gonna be angry at first that you're saying this to her. But you know, after the argument has sunk in and what's been said has sunk in to Carol, she's gonna realise that maybe she shouldn't call you a flesh bag anymore. And the moment she actually calls you by your name or even just human is gonna be significant character growth, right? It's going to be like, what the hell? Carol's called us a human <laughs> instead of flashback? Why? So it's kind of going to be that that thing that puts those, that into place, that change for Carol. Because without this, without this conversation, there's nothing that's going to motivate Carol to have that change. And as we know, with Carol, her arc throughout the saga, not just episode one, this is throughout the entire saga, she's going to become someone, a Sundaya, who's hor a horrible bully and impatient and arrogant to someone who is actually very principled, loyal and a really good addition to the party um, and protective of the people that she loves. And seeing that growth of character is going to be something special. I think so. So even at the end of episode one, she's going to be no angel still because it's not even going to be probably till mid game that we start to see some changes within her. But I'd say that she she could there could be a difference slightly between early episode one Carol to end game episode one Carol. She might no longer be calling you a flashback anymore by the end of episode one. Um, so, what we could do to make sure that um, if she says flashback, Hmm. Oh, well, I've got another idea. We can have the hero say one thing and then she'll call us flashback and then that'll 
lead into the flesh about conversations. This, this doesn't all have to be over in a single dialogue box. We can make this um, confrontation a bit longer if we want. I mean, we can really go all out and make this dramatic um, and really passionate and like, whoa, this was, we, that, we want this to be a memorable fight, a memorable argument and confrontation. So. I'm trying to think how we can do this really good. I guess it's thinking about what we're what we're like when we argue with people and what makes us angry and also what why are we what what how do we feel about Carol at the moment? I think it's a good thing to think in the hero's head and think about how we would in real life actually talk to a person like Carol to try and make our point of why they need to think about have a good think about themselves and, and change their ways so yeah we got to really get get in that sort of perspective and separate ourselves from it being a game and, fa and fictional characters for a moment actually imagine if this was real life and um okay so i'm gonna get the two choice two choices up here of how we can um speak to carol here so we might this could we could have a few thoughts on this and i'm all up for hearing it um but there's gonna be i'd say it makes sense for us there to be one really savage approach like really really horrible and to carol really rip into her and scold her if you're an evil hero and it's not so much that you're honourable as a real hero and you're just that angry with her because you're not honourable when you're an evil hero, obviously. But it's just a chance for you to be horrible to, to, a, to somebody, you know. Evil heroes would not hold back or be kind with the words. Any chance for confrontation, an, a, an evil hero will revel off, right? That's how I see it. I'm going to cough. But the good hero doesn't have to be kind to Carol either, put it that way. I just think the way they'd approach their wording would be different. I think both branches need to be real talk, but just in a different way. Um, so let's... Um, Honestly, I wouldn't like her because even if she's the inventory, as a hero, I'd be thinking I could get another inventory that doesn't talk back so much. Yeah, so... That's one perspective, what Van's just said, the fact that you can get another one. Maybe we could we could say this. I mean, I don't know how long we should make this confrontation, if we should have it be several dialogue boxes even. I guess it all depends how juicy we can get with this, um, this fight. We'll see where it takes us. This is going to be very rough at the moment, rough around the edges, but we'll just get all thoughts down and all reasons why we're angry at Carol. So I'm glad that you've said that, Van. I want I'd love to have more perspectives on what chat think about Carol and how you'd feel if this was you were faced with a, somebody like this in real life. And um, what you'd kind of think about them and what you'd say to them. Because the more feedback we have here, the more we'll be able to put those thoughts into the dialogue as we write this confrontation from the point of view as us as the hero. So the more perspectives, the better, and the more options we've got. The more realistic and believable the fight's going to be as well. And the, and the more, re, like, the more, the better it is, the more it's going to give Carol that change of heart. Because if we haven't made our, our point enough to Carol in this scene, she's not going to change. She's not going to sit there and think, maybe I should stop calling them a flashback it's not especially someone as stubborn as carol we've got to be really really like serious and really make i think okay so let's think let's get rid of this dialogue because that's not the right one um So,
Is that more evil hero or more good hero? I'm thinking of it from evil hero at the moment. But I'm trying to think if that was evil hero, what would be the good the good version of that? Um so it's true, she's selfish. Uh, okay, so let's just get these branches down. This would go to both. That looks messy, but whatever, I'll we'll fix it after. <laughs> okay, so. Now, so I've got an idea from the evil hero. We could always focus on the evil or harsher hero um, argument with Carol first and then think of the more, lot like, nicer. I don't think nice is the word, but firm or, or honest is really what we're going to be going for with that one. Um, let's say um, she needs a hero more than the hero needs her at this point because it is early in the game and there isn't a ton of loot yet. She's not as necessary. Yeah, so the way you're speaking, Van, is probably more... Maybe like what, you, what you're saying is more fitting for a good hero to say because it's very like logical and true. And it, you're not being argumentative or mean or nasty. To Carol by saying that you're just being honest and that might actually have more that might that would be enough to shock Carol into changing as well tr potentially true because really ultimately both these branches have to make Carol realize so that's something to consider um, I'm gonna just delete those because they're messy and uh, look massive so I'll delete them for now um, okay so Carol's going to obviously have something to say. Whether she'd say the same thing to both, it all depends on what the good hero says. Um, but really, I suppose the thinking of the purpose of this scene as well is that when this argument is over and done with that we actually do kind of feel a bit bad for Carol um, especially if we go down the evil route because it should be pretty savage we don't want to detest Carol we still want to sort of be intrigued about her as a character and her journey with finding her barrel companions because she's, she's still our MVP Okay, so um, I think imagining from Carol's perspective here, if someone's just said that to her, she'd be a bit in disbelief, right? She she'd kind of be a bit in shock that someone said that to her. Um, and. Uh, if you keep calling me a bag, that technically means you regard me as a container like you. Yeah. So that's true. But it's almost like... That almost sounds playful. But I think, you know, it's whether we... The, even the good here, I think, needs to be firm and harsh. Um, hmm. I think Carol's proud of being a container, though. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I'm trying to think about the flesh bag part now you've reminded me of that because that needs to come in that needs to be part of the whole argument because ultimately what we want her to rethink the flesh bag nickname she's given us so uh, we she could say in this dialogue
from from I'm trying to think in Carol's head now. She's gonna see herself as she's gonna see herself as the opposite of selfish. Because everything that she's done is to has been to find and protect her family in her in her view. So she'd be so she'd probably think self excuse me selfish how am, how am I selfish everything I've done is to protect um, my family she, she could say something like that but I think we need to put flesh bag in there because then that will lead on to him saying to you as the hero saying you know the flesh bag stop it the word those words um, okay um And then you can you could say I don't like your tone, the flesh bag name, and all that. So I think it's just about being real and firm, isn't it? At this point, not not even any jokes, like you might have been like at the start with her, where you were playful and being like, "I'll call you morning wood," or all those playful jokes that we had earlier on in the quest. It's over now. You're like, this is this is um, you can just be straight blunt even as the good hero you're gonna be blunt um so um because it's the only way that she's gonna finally sit back and listen and change as long as you're still playful with her she'll think oh he likes that banter or they like that banter it's it's just our dynamic um and I think the hero should say, no, you should have. I'm tired of you ordering me around and being demeaning to me and everyone else in this party. All right. Even the good hero would say, shut up, you think? I think the, the, I think the second part is very good hero sounding. Um, but I'm not sure about the shut up bit. Only because it's, it's I mean... It could come across as aggressive, and I'd, even the good hero, I think, would have a, a would probably hold back from aggressive confrontation. But for sure, they'd be firm with their words. Um, and we want, I think, we want a contrast between the good and evil. And I'm concerned that if we have shut up in the good one, that it's not going to seem much more different than the evil one. I guess it depends what the evil one would say um in all in all um but we'll put the second bit in for sure okay um so obviously we can't say everyone else in the park because well, I suppose it, there's only just Violet, so... Um, so we could always say that be, being demeaning to me. To me and Violet. Or would it be to Violet and myself? Or Violet and I? I'm trying to think of the best wording for that now. Um, there is a point that even a good hero must put a foot down. Yeah, I do agree. But I'm trying to, th I don't want to 100% go with that until we know what the um, evil hero is going to say first. Because we want there to be a difference. Because um, right now, even with that one, there doesn't, this one doesn't seem quite harsh enough. It's harsh, but not harsh enough. We need to go all out with the evil hero, especially if we're gonna be firmer on that one. Um, we, we almost need to be cruel on this one. And I think we get in there with that, but not quite enough. Um,
yeah i think we should get more sav savage i think that's that's a good base but i think it needs to be pushed even more um I, I think the evil hero should laugh at Carol, then say you're the most selfish person I've ever met. Um, okay. So. Yeah. A, a new custom hero creator, I think, will let us, to an extent, do us do different facial expressions and things like that, but I still want to be careful because I, I, I haven't tested it for sure. Um, so I'll tr we'll try and approach it from a perspective of strong words rather than facial expressions for the hero at this time, but I think, yeah, if we can pull off that, we can add that later. Um, but then say you don't really don't care about getting anything but yourself do you then the hero smacks um, yeah and I mean that that's uh, almost like the evil hero enjoys Carol being like that which I think we have to be careful about I can see that approach that approach making sense but remember that conversation we all had on stream um was it was it Friday when we said um there's gonna be a point mid-game when Carol's gonna abandon us if with the evil hero she's gonna just leave she's gonna go and um and we're gonna be like whoa what is she she gone and she has she's gonna leave and i think that means that the arc the character journey and dynamic with evil hero and carol needs to get, be one that's just gonna carol's just gonna be fed up in the end because if we sort of encourage her evil ways or almost enjoy them she might actually become an evil partner friend with us uh, but Carol's quite, Carol is principled deep down. She has morals, so I don't think she'd ever like an evil hero. But, um, yeah, I suppose I'm seeing it as a relationship that needs to go just be so toxic and horrible for Carol that she that's why she leaves in the end, because she's had enough. The insults have been too much for her. Um... But I guess it depends. I guess we have to think about that growth from from with uh, Evil Hero now to how Evil Hero will be with Carol mid-game. Because it could, we could always approach Evil Hero and Carol as a relationship where it's more about manipulation and a quieter kind of um, in a quieter sort of evilness than an all-out intimidating bullying and shouting eat kind of evilness and um that could be more damaging in the long run for carol because she she realized that quieter evil person she's seen beneath the mask and what they're really like guess it depends in in the approach that we want which i think is good to consider it at this point considering we get we're getting into it the beginnings of this evil and carol relationship now so thinking about that dynamic now could be ideal um and okay then maybe say after the selfish part instead if you want me to find your family shut up a moment and listen okay so Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to. Yeah, we don't want to reveal the the thing though, if that's what you mean. But I don't know. Um, I'm starving. You know, I'm absolutely famished. <laughs> I need food. Um, basically, giving a little unsaid threat. 
Okay, that, I, I, yeah, if that's what you mean by threat, that could work. I, I thought you meant reveal the, the fact that you've got the lucky charm, but no. <laughs> um, might slip, slip by her right now. Okay. Hmm, yeah, I think ultimately we want to make the two different. I think that could work, making the evil one just very almost aggressive and threatening. Um and intimidating her into silence whereas this one's just more of an honest real talk thing and just trying to commu communicate to Carol that the way she's being isn't going to help their relationship in the long run um I mean, I do, I do think it needs to be harsh. I'm just so um, would now I've put it there. Does it work? What do you think? Is there enough of a difference? But we we might need to add a bit more, like we say, to this part. So, um, yeah, if we put shut up in both of them, I'm not sure if there's enough of a difference. That's the only thing. So I'm just thinking of a slight reword of the a threat that can come here. One that's even harsher. Um, and later, when she realises the hero is the evil or long, she can reflect back to some of these things he said. Yeah, so... It's so like hmm um or you could say your yak trap is worse than the fruits oh you know how we said actually now you say that i've just been reminded this here suggests that carol's behavior and morals are worse than the fruits that would probably be perfect actually for, for the evil hero to be the one that says that because that is pretty severe to say that she's worse than the fruits right but maybe we should say a cork coal instead of yak trap. Because that was really clever. I think that was Rex that suggested that. He said that a good word would be cork coal because barrels actually do have corks put in their holes in real life. And Carol's mouth could be considered a sort of cork coal. But I do, I love the yak trap insult, but maybe that's the Carol insult to the hero and then the hero insult to Carol can be. Court so your court call um or oh, hang on let's think i can be all the hang on actually let's split this into two we can talk about her the court call thing um, but then we can talk about the morals with the fruits in a sec as well. Because we're going to have a couple, maybe two or three branches of this. It's We're not going to just fit it all into one single dialogue box. I think it'd be smarter if we, we broke it down. Um, so maybe something like... I can be rid of you any time I want. This is still a bit long, maybe, to me, but we'll say we can always break it down into set two different dialogue boxes if it goes on a bit. I'll put another word in then for accident. <laughs> I don't need to put up with your um, court colour. I don't know if that's put up is the best word. Yeah, another word. Let's see. Put up. Um.
yeah, I only because I don't know if put up is a strong enough uh, word with evil hero. We want to make sure they're so savage and descriptive in everything they say. Um, so I'm not 100% sure of that, but you know what I'm trying to get at. Um, your, um, something along that lines that they don't need to put up with Carol. They can even murder her. I do like the idea of really threatening her, where it's almost like, you know, I can I can murder you. Whereas this one wouldn't go that far. Um, right, so the thing about our choice boxes in game, we, we don't have tons of room for dialogue when it comes to choices. We only really have a, a certain space on our choice bar so we might need to break this up anyway into small out sections of dialogue boxes and I won't, I'm not totally against that because I think having the argument be paced a little better so we're not all forcing it into to, bo to one dialogue box will work better to kind of do that build up of anger and feelings and that carol's probably feeling like when 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 she's processing all this being said to her so i'm thinking i'm very much thinking about splitting this up into a few things but you know what i want to do i think this is going to be easier if we get all thoughts um between evil hero and good hero in a google doc first and and then we can easily organize how we can break them into um dialogue boxes after because it's kind of challenging to to do it straight into draw io so what we'll do is this um good hero evil hero to carol And it's going to just be a lot easier to just get thoughts down quickly without worrying about the format in that way. Um, so just give me a sec to get this all down. Um, we don't have too long left to stream. I will go a little bit over time today. I think we could do with it um, and I want to before we end at least get a variety of different things that the good hero might say to Carol and d things that the evil hero might say to Carol and I think then I'll be satisfied by uh, by this and then by next stream we can get that finalized and then uh, that's cool okay but but then you're starting to show how evil the hero is if he says anything close to he could murder her yeah so so you think you think it's going a bit too far if we threaten threaten murder i think we shouldn't we should subtly hint at it as a threat if we're gonna do it perhaps my tummy's rumbling so much okay so um now let, let's break it down into sentences rather than um rather than have it as big long things so you're the most selfish person i've ever met i can be rid of you anytime i want don't need to put up with your call call evil hero would also suggest that carol's behavior and morals are worse than the fruits as well um
think Good Hero needs to say the same thing, but in a different way. So they probably mention, you know, that the names, because Carol will probably be like, what, what do you mean? And she's not going to understand. Um, so you kind of, good hero has to spell it out to Carol that it's the names he used, the hurtful. And I think that's a reasonable thing to say, you know, that what you say is hurtful to us, the names you give us. That isn't out of line at all. It's very fair and will potentially make consider a rep. Her, the, her way of speaking to you but evil hero has to go that step further and be like yeah you you're worse than them like literally compare it to murderous villains um i think the threat should be very subtle maybe evil hero can say do you want me to find your family or not which isn't very direct threat but common that there is the option of the hero not following through due to our actions yeah only thing is um from a player's perspective they might go with that dialogue box option thinking that you know that's fine to say which is um and then get evil points for saying that and they might feel like they've been unfairly given evil points on the evil scale so that's the only challenge you know we don't want to give evil points to something that is subtle or might because that sort of line from perspective could be good it all depends on your perspective like if i was playing the game and and the choice box came up saying do you want me to find your family or not i think yeah that's fair to ask because i'd have good intentions um so if i was suddenly getting evil points even though you know i'd think well i weren't i didn't mean to be evil then so um that's the only thing i think it needs to it sometimes it has to be a little bit more heavy-handed so that the player knows what the ramifications of picking that choice are if that makes sense so it's just thinking of how to handle that and they won't know the scouter won't know it's going to be invisible but they're still going to be classed as an evil hero and it kind of might be unjustified because they i just know that i could easily say that and think I'm doing the right thing. I just, I genuinely want to help Carol find a family. There's no agendas or manipulation going on. I'm just saying right out what I want to do. Um, and I might have not clicked that that actually was evil or manipulative. Um, so, um, because even though we, we haven't got a scale in game or in the menu that's showing where you are, it's going to be reflected in um, in your actions. You're going to see the NPCs treating you differently or good guy people avoiding you or Father Maple approaching you and you'll be like, well, I never <laughs> meant to be. I never had meant to be evil. And uh, so i um, going to head out. Have a good one, bros, and chat. Stay safe, everyone. Take care, sexy. Thanks so much for hanging out and for your feedback and, and stuffs today. I appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful um, rest of your evening um, and uh, the previous words would kind of say that this isn't exactly the good direction um, yeah that's the thing I, I suppose it's because I was thinking I'm going to separate these dialogue boxes they're not all going to be in the, on the same dialogue box because we're going to spread this argument out to a few boxes like we'll have we'll have a two choices carol dialogue more two more choices carol dialogue uh you know so that it's on gut it's a few things not just one choice carol dialogue argument over like it's not gonna just be over after one dialogue box. I was thinking of stretching it out to a few dialogue boxes, which would obviously, obviously if it was with the, you're the most selfish person I've ever met, you'd kind of know that it was the evil one then for sure, I'm with you. But if we spread them out so that it's on a different dialogue box, then we're not gonna match that up to the selfish person I've ever met line. Um, but, 
Um, it all depends. I mean, we could totally put it on the same line as most selfish person I've ever met. No problem with that. I just don't want to make the choices look be too too wordy, which was why I was kind of um, tempted to to separate them onto different boxes. But we'll say we'll. This is kind of like drafting at the moment. Um, but we'll get it there on the same line for not. But I don't, I don't know if there's... I'm not sure I'm happy with that because I'm not sure I can... Uh, I can connect the two lines of you're the most savage person I've ever met. Do you want me to find your family or not? I'm not sure. But maybe that's because I'm not evil. So I can't wrap my head around it because of that. But... Um, I'm trying to... What I want to do is make bullet points of separate thoughts right now of what we're thinking um, and then we can um, but we, we've got the main ones dad we want we've got the names one down those were really important the whole point really was to highlight the flesh bag insult for both evil hero and good hero we could add a bit more to this one I think I think we need a little bit more um, added to the names you use are hurtful but we'll have a think about that one um, other than that so we've, we've got that we've got that we've got yeah so I think we've 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 covered everything on the outline the name bit the the um work being worse than the fruits um okay i think it's because we really need to make sure as well that each um the dialogue box that leads the first one we have anyway leads on to us mentioning you know we don't like the flesh bag insult um so it's got to lead on to that same conversation that's really our our end point it's telling carol that but this is an interesting one too But there's a lot of thoughts going on in my head right now it's all di a bit ju um jumbled and there's a lot of different approaches with how to do, do it which is very very sort of how it goes when you're writing a first draft um but i'm glad we've like kind of the main thing is we've covered the things in the outline because we want to hit all those points for sure um, and we still got more to go. We've got three more points to this scene that we haven't hit yet. But this is definitely the challenging one. <laughs> it was always going to be the most challenging one, this confrontation with Carol. Because um, it's it's potentially, it could potentially be, re it could potentially be a really good moment and scene. So we want to make sure we do it good, you see. So that's why there's a lot of fuss over this one. Um, in fact, the rest of the scene's much easier to probably deal with overall. This is the juicy and challenging part, this middle part of the scene. Um, But ultimately, let's remind ourselves how it has to end because that is also important. If we've been too savage to her, like, it's not going to flow into this bullet point. So eventually you feel bad for Karen Nod Nod at Violet to go ahead with the pain. She paints portrait the reptile. I mean, we don't, evil hero doesn't necessarily have to feel bad for Carol. But the thing is, we, we do have to get that painting done. And if we pee Carol off too much or we get sidetracked too much we're not that painting will never get finished so we got to hit that plot point so 
I'm thinking now before we fill in all the gaps what the what's it what it's going to be that's going to provoke us to let tell Violet to continue on with the painting um Hmm. I, had, I had a thought come in my head then but it's like disappeared in a second so let me just think um. okay so I've got a thought Carol could plead so let's get that in on the branch actually because it'll probably make more sense to do that and we'll put it way over here to show that we've got more argument dialogue to have before we get to this point. She could say, looks desperate I was trying to think of the emotion then and I was like plead I can't say looks pleading because that that's not enough doesn't make sense so um so Um, not sure if that's going to be the final one we go for, but the point is um, Carol, she she just she something that is going to make you think, okay, Violet, um, go and paint. So if we if we get the green dollar box here, something that. Um, you nod at Violet to paint and then Violet will paint she'll do the painting and we'll hit point seven eight and nine um, and it'll lead to us going back to like full and maybe yeah we can have some lore and twisted facts about the reptiles as well um, So I was. Tr I think it's probably. I thought it'd be a good idea to get in what we need the end of the argument to be, because then we not we don't go off to track too much. You know, we, we can keep we can remember that that's the end point of where it's got to lead to, um, and it can all flow then. Um, but something has to lead to that. That's going to be the challenging bit. Um, so something has to be said that makes Carol say that, so, um, almost Carol, probably something that's going to almost make Carol feel worried that their lives are on the line almost, um, that fear has got to be put within her. Um, hmm, I think I've got a couple of thoughts actually, but it's it's it will it's it, it's quite um it's quite a process of how it would get to that. But I have got some thoughts and think yeah what I'm gonna do after my dinner I'm gonna get those down and then by Friday's stream I might have um, it down actually but thanks um, chat van and Zexy and folks and Matt for your thoughts because it'll probably help a bunch with filling out that argument section of what dialogue can go in there for the 
for the evil and good hero so if you've got any more thoughts feel free to say um because we've got a few bullet points in here and these are probably the main ones we want to hit on but i know that more's being said in chat so i can always look through the vod and um fill this in more as well um but yes But I think I've got an idea. I just hope it doesn't slip my uh, my mind. All right, folks. So time is moving on. It is after six, and we're we're doing okay. We're not. We're definitely not at the end of this uh, scene yet. Um, and um, this this is a challenging part, but it could be good with some thought into it. Thank you for that follow, Sai. I appreciate it. Um, and what I'm going to do between uh, now and Friday I'm gonna I'm actually gonna try and flesh this argument out more I'm gonna see if I can get it done on stream and then I'll share it with you at the start of next stream because I would like this part to be out the way for next time um because I would would really like to think about you know ending this scene I think once the uh, the confrontation with Carol is over and we the hero has said what they've needed to say um this this the rest of this scene might not need to go on for much longer we'll see though um and um but i think overall it's going to be easier to to do these parts than it is the actual argument bit do you want to do a trivia yeah should we do a trivia chat it's been a while hasn't it i think i did i did um delete the november leaderboard actually so I mean, December leaderboard. <laughs> Ooh, what is Carol's goal? Yeah, folks, sometimes if trivia slips my mind, don't be afraid to, like, mention in chat. Just say, Rose, do a trivia. <laughs> and I will. Um, to find and protect her family, Met got a point. Okay, awesome. Okay, so can I... I'm going to see if I can remember this trivia, because it's been a while. Um, points, one... Whoa, I, I think I forgot the command. <laughs> That's bad. Um, let's see if I can get it. Let me tick. You like, there we go. No, I've done it wrong. That wasn't the one. Maybe this is it then. Maybe it's this way around. Yay, I did it got it in the end hi mush hi rose i'm curious what app are you using for your workflow hi mush well this is plain old google docs this section here this 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 particular one here and this one here is draw.io so i'll give you the link to that in chat i always use draw.io for dialogues and anything that you know involves flows boxes and putting arrows to things draw is the best for that but anything that's like really rough and wordy i tend to like prefer google docs just to get thoughts in place um which is what i'm doing here like when when my thoughts are really disjointed and messy i always like to just get whatever in here and then when i've got more of an idea then it's then i go into this so it can be organized because it can be quite hard i find when you you don't exactly know what to write to just do it in this especially when it involves branching paths and it's quite when it's quite an ambitious scene as well because you just want to make it as good as possible and flow and make sense and um and then then it can be quite the challenge so doing outlining is super helpful can see our bullet point stuff cool thanks it looks good i was mind master but yeah oh you've changed your name oh cool well i like the name mush as well that's a cool name okay folks so yes um well done matt for getting that point on the trivia um right so yes as you know guys i'm going to finish this argument confrontation scene with carol off stream i'm glad we made a start on it because um it's uh it's a good it's a good scene to work on i think there's still a lot of work left to do with it we're only just getting started with this but we've got we've got um our thoughts um and you never know 
can share it with you at the start next room we might have some more thoughts on where to take it um because that will still be a first draft um and l no lol no it's an app linked to google for my maps and process flows oh i thought you said your name on twitch was my master well you mean that that was uh, yeah as you can see i'm i'm a bit of a goof <laughs> I always, my brain always goes off track, lol, it's all good. I do it all the time, Mush. I do it all the time, that's just me. <laughs> okay, folks. Um, me too, yeah. We're all goofballs here. That's a good thing. Okay, folks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, head off. Um... One set before we go. I don't really have time to do a raid, funnily enough, but I am going to see if anyone is on. Um. Yeah, we'll head over to Vagabond Dog. But I will have to head straight off because my Dindins is nearly ready. guys let's go head to our stream friend vagabond dog and see what they are up to today and i'll see you all on friday guys um hopefully we can get this dialogue done and dusted soon because i'm really looking forward to getting into some scene work and getting all these expanded and added scenes into rpg maker soon i'd really like to get to to think about doing that soon so um hopefully we'll make good progress by the end of the week we'll see where we are and have a good day thanks for sharing your content you're welcome much so take care guys see you all on friday thanks for hanging out with me today bye bye <laughs>